the main difference between analytical GC and inverse GC is that we invert the roles of the stationary and mobile phase. So in inverse GC, we have a column, typically a column, it could be a film, it could be uh, a fiber, it could be a granule. There's lots of different morphologies we can work with. But in essence, we have a carrier gas, nitrogen or helium, and then we inject a probe molecule with known properties and measure the retention time of that probe molecule as it travels across the surface uh, of the material of interest. So we still use retention time as the fundamental measurement, but now we're gonna see how this retention time changes with respect to temperature, flow rate, humidity, and or the molecular size and or chemistry of the probe molecule. We can then use that to back calculate physical chemical properties uh, about the surface. So with any inverse GC technique, uh, since the material and the column is different every time you run a sample, from a GC standpoint, we have to uh, normalize that particular sample. And we do that with every experiment by using an inert molecule. In our instrument, we typically use methane. Other instruments may use argon or uh, krypton as an inert molecule. So this measures the retention of dead volume for the column of interest or the sample of interest. And then all other probes are referenced from that uh, dead volume. So we're looking at basically the net retention time. And we're looking at that net retention time. And as that changes with either different molecule, so going from hexane to heptane to octane, which we'll be doing for surface energy experiments, in other types of experiments, the variable might be column temperature, column flow rate, cross-sectional area of the probe molecule or some other variable. 